Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and today we're gonna look at all of the new updated information from Redfin. And you guys, we have additional price decline, we have price cuts skyrocketing, we have months of supply also going up, we have demand going down, we have all of the things that we need to get more inventory in our housing market and to have the prices continue to decline. I really think you're gonna find a lot of value in this video, but don't forget guys, I'm not a financial advisor, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in real estate in Texas. So I know a little bit about real estate, you guys, and what I'm trying to do with this channel is empower and educate the consumer because the consumer right now in this housing market especially is the biggest at risk and the biggest in danger of making the mistake of their lifetime. So in other words, choose wisely. If you're gonna buy right now, so be it, but try to find something with wedge, with cash flow, have the right expectations. You may have to live in there for 10 to 15 years. You may lose your job, have no consumer debt, have money saved just in case you do lose your job, right? There's certain things that need to happen right now before people purchase. And one of the big things I believe is, is we need lower prices because quite frankly, the prices right now are unprecedented and quite frankly, not sustainable. Now the name of this Redfin article is housing market update. New listings hold up as mortgage rates soar toward 8%. A home buyer on a $3,000 monthly budget has lost nearly $40,000 in purchasing power over the last year, as mortgage rates have risen around 6.5% in October 2022 to nearly 8% today. The glimmer of hope for the housing market, a small September uptick in new listings, and hopefully we see the uptick continue just like we did last year. And also I wanna note that now that school loans have started, more than likely people have lost way more than $40,000 in purchasing power. Mortgage rates hit their highest level in more than 20 years this week, pushing home buyers' monthly housing payments to all time highs once again. A buyer on a $3,000 monthly budget, for instance, can afford a $419,000 home with a 7.7% mortgage rate roughly the daily average on October 4th. That buyer has lost $38,000 in purchasing power since last October, when they could have bought a $457,000 house with a 6.6% interest rate. And by the time buyers had already lost a significant amount of purchasing power since the start of this year, as mortgage rates doubled, throughout 2022. So this chart here, if you guys want to come back here, I'm not going to waste my time here, but you can see how much purchasing power has been lost with interest rates. Again, I'm not going to waste my time here because I really want to focus on prices. In addition to sky high mortgage rates, rising home prices are cutting into buyers' budgets. The typical U.S. home sold for $371,000 during the four weeks ending October 1st up 3% from a year earlier. And just to be clear here, that is down again week over week. I believe that's 10 weeks straight of median sales price decline. Nowhere in this article does it mention that. That's because there aren't enough homes for sale. High housing costs are pushing down demand with mortgage purchase applications dropping to their lowest level in nearly 30 years. But inventory is falling significantly too. As homeowners hang on to relatively low rates, the total number of homes for sale is down 14%. But the reality is, is actually, according to different data providers, we're only down four to 5% from last year. So, you know, at the end of the day, who the heck do we believe? Redfin is way different than Zillow and Zillow is different than CoreLogic. CoreLogic is different than Black Knight. Like, holy smokes, these guys are all over the place. That's not a good sign. That's not a sign of a stable market. Would you agree? Why mortgage rates are rising again? There are several reasons why mortgage rates are still climbing. The Fed hinted that another interest rate hike before the end of the year is likely. The latest job market data came in stronger than expected, and the yield curve is steepening as investors prepare for higher rates for longer. And that's not true. It's not steepening. It's actually uninverting. Turmoil in Congress isn't helping either as the clash among House Republicans stemming from a narrowly missed government shutdown is causing volatility in the stock and bond markets. That was a really crazy event. The silver lining for buyers, most homeowners are listing their homes for sale after months of steady decline. New listings did rise, right? Oh my God, that's good. New listings rose 3% in September and so far this 
fall listings haven't declined as much from the summer as they typically do. That may be partly because listings don't have much more room to fall. And what that means is, is historically low inventory, right? And that's why prices are being propped up. As soon as we get some inventory, just a little bit of inventory and demand stays crushed like this, it's going to turn y'all. But nonetheless, it's a glimmer of hope for buyers because it means they have a bit more to choose from and could eventually ease price increases. All right, taking a look at this week's leading indicators. So the daily average for interest rates right now is 7.7%. Holy smokes. Weekly average is sitting at 7.31%. Now, obviously, if you are in real estate, you already feel the recession and mortgage Purchase applications are down 22%. That is the lowest level in 30 years, nearly 30 years. That is insane. Now, when we go to Redfin home buying demand, we can see we're only down 1% year over year. And that's because last year, this time, no one wanted to buy. Remember how much prices were going down? So the fact that home buying demand is lower than it was last year, that's a great sign for these trends to continue. Now, Google Homes for Search is also down 6% year over year. And now let me scroll down here to median sales price. You guys can see we're down again. So we're down what, over, I think we're down over $1,000. This is another week of median sales price decline. More than likely next week, we will be under 370,000. You guys, we're over $10,000 off of this year. So we've already hit normal seasonal decline. And I really, really want people to understand how seasonality really works. Does seasonality exist? Yes, seasonality does exist. Does the Federal Reserve exist? Yes, the Federal Reserve exists. Does quantitative tightening and increased interest rates exist? Yes, those things exist as well. So it's not just seasonality. And the people that are saying it's only seasonality don't understand what's happening and bless their little hearts. And remember, last year they said it was only seasonality. The decline in median sales price was four to five times greater, greater, four to five times greater than normal seasonality. And there are still some metro areas that have year over year over year decline, meaning that prices are under 2021 on average. We have metro areas like that right now. So the whole seasonal argument really doesn't work when we have metro areas that are under 2021 values. Would you guys agree with that? In other words, stop listening to high risk professionals and accountants, all right? They're all high risk and all the narratives that they push is gonna lead you back to the same thing. You gotta buy a house. No matter how they spin it, no matter what their titles are, they still want you to buy a house because that's their financial bias. And they don't shift from that narrative. And it is what it is. But regardless, you guys, let's dig into some data visualization. Starting with median sales price. And here's what all everyone's in an uproar over like, oh, homes are up 2.9% year over year. And year over year means this. So just basically the difference from 2022 and right now. So it's up 2.9%. But again, you guys, we're off the peak. So this was this year's peak right here. We're off about 10K. Okay, from peak, all right? Plus, we never hit 2022 peak. Again, this is four-week rolling average. The reason why we look at four-week rolling average is it allows us to keep our fingers to the pulse of the housing market much better. Obviously, when people are using stuff like Case Shiller, that stuff is three months behind, three months behind. So this is data we can look at to, again, see what's going on because we know that the prices of houses, it's not like the stock market. It literally takes one week for us to get a sign of movement. So it takes a lot longer. This is a great set of data. I don't believe that they're being honest about it. I think it's a little bit of manipulation. But again, you guys, look at the trajectory. Okay, so the trajectory is heading downward. And, and remember, basically from the start of this year, I've been saying we're gonna head down here. Now comment below and let me know if you think it's now more and more likely. And I got so much hate from people. I had people coming on and commenting like, oh, I thought it was supposed to end down there. Where's the, where's the decline? Where's the decline? Well, you see it right now. You see it right now. It's undisputable. This is median asking price. I cannot figure out why this is skyrocketing. When I first mentioned median asking price and being suspicious of it, the difference of median asking and median sales price was about $1,000. And I thought that was suspicious. One week later, look at this, it starts ballooning. I think it's possible the reason that is, is they're manipulating the MLS data that they're using. I don't know that for sure. I don't want to make that claim, but it definitely is suspicious. Now, the thing is, though, when we look at the historical trends, Last year, we had a movement up this time of year in median asking price, and then the year before right here as well. So I'm very curious if you guys know why that is. Why does that happen at this time of year? I, I, I'm all ears. I, I, I would love to know because it is suspicious in my opinion. But regardless, median asking price is up 4.6% 
year over year. And it may be a result of luxury houses staying on the market for longer and the affordable homes getting off the market sooner. Now take a look at home buying payments, you guys. This is so outrageous. I mean, I cannot believe that we have higher mortgage payments right now, 10% higher than this time last year. And there were still people flooding out in the housing market saying it's the best time to buy. If we don't buy now, we'll miss out on the opportunity of our lifetimes. Think about how crazy that is. We have our whole lifetimes to find a great deal and people are flooding out into the housing market at the worst time in history to buy a house. It's so crazy to me. But anyways, guys, the payments are up 10% year over year. But look at how much it's up from just two years ago. I mean, this is the rug pull. So even though it's up 10% there, I mean, from when we were from 2021, it's up a lot, a lot more. So basically, in order for fundamentals to come back, what would have to happen, guys, we would need values to go down about 30%, according to some people, or we would need to make 55% more income. So either incomes go up, okay, or prices come down. I'm cool with both of those things, to be honest with you. I would love to make 55% more income. Raise your hand if you would love to make 55% more income also. Here is new listings. And this has been inching up since about the end of August. Obviously, we want to be like way up here, you guys. We want to be way up here, right? We're going to need some type of black swan event to happen if I'm going to win my bet. We're missing about 180,000 right now. So this trajectory is going to need to go up. In fact, I don't think I can hit the bet anymore unless that black swan happens. STRs, IREITs, institutional investors. I mean, we can name a bunch, but the thing is, is it's a little bit slow. So it's uh, really difficult to know exactly when it's going to happen. But regardless, you guys, new listings is actually going up, not down. In fact, we're only down 3% year over year. So that's not too bad, actually comparatively not too bad. Here's our active listings. This is down 14% year over year. Now, according to who, you know, depending on who you're looking at, like if you go to realtor.com, the National Association of Realtors, they're saying we're off like four to 5%. So I'm not sure where this is coming from, but either way, you guys, I mean, you know, slight tick up right here, just very, very slight. In order for me to win my $1 bet, we have to end up here. Okay, so in order for me to win, this is the trajectory. That's not good. That's not a good trajectory. I'm really worried, you guys. I'm really worried about that dollar. I think median sales price all hit it, but I don't think that will hit the inventory that I was thinking we were this year until next year. I'm still holding on to hope. Again, absent a black swan event, I don't know that we're going to hit a million active units by the end of this year. But it is possible we hit four to five months of supply by the end of this year. We are now at, thank God, 3.3 months of supply. You guys can see the trajectory is shooting up. We are now higher than we were last year. Okay, so we're above last year in October as far as supply. So a lot of the whole supply and demand argument is actually greater right now than it was last year. So again, naturally, naturally, prices should continue to go down potentially for several years. But nevertheless, you guys, what we want is we want over six months of supply. When we have over six months of supply, the market becomes a buyer's market. Okay, here's our bidding war chart right here. 31% of homes sold above final list price. That doesn't necessarily mean market value. It's a little bit deceptive right there, but the good thing is, is it is going down. It's almost under a four-year record. It's not quite there yet, but again, what this is saying is, it's slowing down. If you're, especially if you're in a tight market where there's bidding wars, that's slowing down considerably. This is really, really wild. We actually are almost at a new four week average record, but right now we're sitting at 6.6. .6. Again, we need to go over this line right there to hit a new record of price cuts. And the astonishing thing about price cuts is this is just price cuts in this period of time. If you look at the whole MLS right now in Metro Air's Price cuts are on 30 to 40% of listings. Again, 30 to 40% of listings right now have price cuts, and this is surging. We are almost at a new record, not quite there yet. We are over where we were at this time last year. So we have more supply, we have less demand, we have more price cuts, prices are going down again. We have all of the factors that we need 
to get back to a balanced housing market, more inventory and more affordable prices. But unfortunately, more than likely, it's not gonna happen overnight, obviously. And last but not least, the stubborn home buying demand. And honestly, home buying demand isn't even that strong. It just appears that strong because we have such low inventory, but it's dead in the water. Literally, demand is dead in the water. Look at the mortgage applications. I mean, it's awful. Now, we are still at a four-year low right here. You can see it's under the last four years. Buying demand is down 1%. You can see this time last year in 2022, it really started going down. So more than likely, we're going to follow that trend. I hope we follow that trend. I don't know. Hopefully, we will be under last year's low which was, I believe, the middle to end of October. So we'll keep an eye on that. But this is this week's data visualization. And other than that, guys, I hope you guys got some new perspective, value, and insights. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck, and I hope you win.